Hey folks, on this episode of Tool Talk, I'm talking about my bandsaw. This is a Grizzly G0555LANV bandsaw. And the whole point of this Tool Talk series is to build up a library of answers to the commonly asked questions that I get about my tools. So not crazy detailed today, just what I like, what I don't like, and basically what I buy it again. And real quick, I get a lot of people asking me if I'm using these papers to cover up the name here. Uh, I'm not, this is a magnet. And this is a very handy place to put notes when I'm either using the bandsaw or the table saw. So I use this kind of like a clipboard. Uh, but, but anyway, the this is the G0555 LANV, and it's basically one of their fi one of Grizzly's 555 series bandsaws. The LANV means it's the anniversary edition, 30th anniversary edition, uh, which means it has the black and orange paint scheme, and there might be a couple little subtle details here and there that have changed. Uh, but what do I like about this? Uh, it's a 14 inch bandsaw. It's got enough power for everything that I've put through it. It's got a six and a six and three eighths of an inch resaw capacity. And with a properly, with a proper blade that's nice and sharp, uh, it handles just anything that I can throw at it. The worst thing that I've put, uh, put through it is a full six inch piece of end grain oak when I was making some bandsaw scoops and using a four TPI, three sixteenths of an inch skip tooth blade, uh, it handled it just fine. The power was there to, to cut through the, to power through the cut with no problems whatsoever. So I'm pleased with the performance of this particular saw, assuming that there's a good blade on it. Now a crappy blade, a dull blade, is going to make this saw feel underpowered and that's just universal for any power tool, basically. Something else that I really like about this is there's very little maintenance to this thing. I've had it for about, well, I guess four years now, three years now, something like that. I've had it for quite a long time and I haven't done anything to it other than clean the pine pitch off of the bearings. That's pretty much all I've ever done to it. Uh, no other maintenance was needed so far. Something else that I like about it, the fence is nice. This is a T-square style fence with adjustments to adjust for drift and a couple adjustments here. Uh, to, I think there's an adjustment here to uh, to get this edge perpendicular to the tabletop. The fence is nice, uh, slides as needed, and it's easy to get out of the way. And there's a nice little hanging spot for it right there. Something else I like is all of the adjustments are really easy. Dialing in these bearing guides is very easy. Now they do require an Allen wrench set, um, they're not, you know, like wing nuts or anything. You can just adjust by hand, which is fine. Just use a couple um, Allen wrenches and, and adjust it as needed. Everything else adjusts just fine. Um, the tracking of the top wheel in and out to make sure that the blade is centered on the wheel. There's a knob in the back. Again, su super easy to do that. Something else I really like is that the stand is very sturdy. This is one of the only stationary power tools I've purchased and kept the original stand on it. Now I switched it off to another stand that was mobile for a, for a little bit and then I realized that I like the original stand that it came on better so I switched it back to this stand. So this stand as it is is uh, very sturdy. Um, well it's not really on level ground but it's, it's very sturdy uh, as far as the base itself goes. This is the only tool in my shop that is not mobile. There's no mobile base on this. However, I use a, and it's not here in the shop, I use a uh, small appliance dolly that I could just put into one side and lean the whole saw over to me and I can move it around. I don't move it around enough to uh, justify purchasing or making a mobile base for it. A couple things that I really don't like is this, this tabletop, the trunnions, this whole assembly feels very weak. So, stay. So. I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera. Maybe you can see the other side flexing over there. But this table has quite a bit of movement in it. I don't like that. However, I don't think it's ever been a problem. I've never put anything heavy enough on here to deflect the table to cause an issue. But I know that's there and I don't really like it. Something else I don't like is the dust collection. The dust collection on this thing is really not good at all. Um, I think that's more of a bandsaw problem than a this particular saw problem. Uh, I think the, band, the dust collection would be a lot better if the suction port or the suction in general was right underneath the table, right where the uh, uh, 
lower guides are. I think that would make it make it a lot better. But as of right now, dust goes everywhere. And if I'm doing a couple quick cuts, I don't even worry about dust collection. I just make my quick cuts. I only turn the dust collection on, <clears throat> excuse me, if I know I'm going to be running it for a while, say more than four, five, six cuts, something like that. Something else I don't like um, is the way that the fence is mounted. Now I do like the fence, but I don't like the way that the fence is mounted because this front rail, when you go to change the blades, you have to uh, you have to pull the blade off just the, off the tires, bend it around underneath this door, and then around this arm the whole time, keeping the blade inside this uh, insert plate area right here because which the insert plate's easy to remove because the blade has to be removed from the side and not from the front. So you have to bring this off, down, around, and then come out this way on the table. It's, it's kind of annoying to get, especially if you're using like a three quarter or a half inch thick blade, half inch wide blade, to get it to bend and contort around here. I would much appreciate it if, I would much, I would like it a lot better if the front fence was only attached on one side and doesn't even have to be this long. If it was, say, starting here and going that way, and then you have your T-square style fence, but the fence was offset to one side of the T-square, so it'd still work on this side of the table. It would just stick out that way a little bit more. I would much prefer that, and then have the blade slot on the front of the table, so that way you just take it off. It'd be much easier to do so like that. But it's not a deal breaker. It's just an inconvenience, and I don't change blades often hardly at all, so... Yeah, that, that is what it is. Uh, real quick blade recommendation, I guess, because that's something else that I get commonly asked. I use a 3 16 of an inch, 4 TPI skip tooth blade for pretty much all the curve cuts. It's a really good blade for bandsaw boxes. Um, and then a half inch wood slicer blade for resawing. However, I think I'm just going to leave the 3 16 blade on there. And it, you know, it resaws just fine as well. Just take your time making your cut. And that's probably going forward the only blade I'll ever put on this thing. A 3 16 of an inch 4 TPI skip tooth blade. Um, <coughs> no affiliation with Highland Woodworking at all, but that's where I get my blades from. Just go to highlandwoodworking.com and that's where I get mine. So, I think that wraps up all the what I like, what I don't like. And would I buy it again? Um, Yes and no. I think I made the right decision. Uh, I love the bandsaw. It's a great bandsaw. It, I, I think I made the right decision at the time buying this particular one. However, if I was to do it over again, um, I think long term it would be more beneficial for me to get to ju jump up just a little bit to the next step to get something with more resaw capacity. That's the only downside I find in my workflow is sometimes I wish I could have a little bit more resaw capacity because this is six and three eighths of an inch, so you might as well say six inches. And then you can have a 12 inch wide book matched panel uh, maximum with this. I would much, I would, I would like to have a little bit more resaw capacity for that reason to make wider book matched panels, maybe for like a tabletop or something. So if I had to do it over again, I'd probably step it up a little bit. Um, my options right now to get more resaw capacity are either buy the riser block kit or just buy another bandsaw and. I don't really have the space here in the shop to justify a second bandsaw, and that one would be pretty much dedicated for resawing. This one would be for curves. I've thought about it, but I don't really have any space in here. So if I make a change to get more resaw capacity in this particular shop, it will probably be the riser block kit. However, I don't see myself doing it anytime soon. So yeah, it's a good bandsaw. Would I buy it again if I was in the exact same situation? Yes, my budget did not allow me to go to the next step. However, looking back on it, I wish I would have just jumped to the next step. It's not that much more money and got a little bit bigger bandsaw with more resaw capacity. So I hope that helps. Hopefully you guys, uh, or if you guys have any more questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them. So thanks for watching, you guys take care and I'll catch you on the next one.